excuse me? So you're basically trying to say that it's almost like you're trying to say people stole farts, spoons. I don't know. I'm just like the audacity of it is just crazy. It's mind blowing. Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Katie. So in today's video, I'll be discussing my wedding. I want to share my experience, the planning process budget versus actual cost, vendor selection, and just give you some recommendations and tips, things that I would do differently if I could do it all over again. So if you don't know, I live in the Cayman Islands. I live on the island of Grand Cayman. Kurt and I, we got married earlier this year. We got married on February 20th, 2022. So I'm going to be very transparent in this video. I'm going to give you the cost of items or services that were used. So we got married at Queen Elizabeth II Botanic Park, that's in Northside on Grand Cayman. So the cost for the full day rental was $1,530 KYD. In USD, that's $1,913. There's many reasons why we chose the Botanic Park. Honestly, it's absolutely stunning. It's a 65 acre property and they had about five to six different areas that you could get married on. We have the Color Garden Lawn, the Gazebo, Heritage House Lawn, Rotary Schoolhouse, the courtyard and the lakeside patio. I think that's all. So we chose to use the color garden lawn. So we use that for the ceremony and reception. And then for the caterer, we use the gazebo, which is very close to the color garden lawn. I'll show you a video. So another huge reason why we chose the Botanic Park was the cost. Honestly, a lot of venues on island were starting at 5,000 KYD just for the rental fee. So when we realized we could book the Botanic Park and it's $1,530, and then also we would save so much money on floral arrangements because you're surrounded by so many plants, flowers, and trees. We're like, yeah, this is probably better to do it here. The only downside is that the park is open to visitors until I think 4 or 4 30 so if you're getting married at 1 2 in the afternoon the park is open to visitors they will try to block off the section that you have chosen to have your ceremony slash reception but it's open to visitors so your guests will be walking with other visitors of the park so just be mindful that it is still open it's not closed off for you for the whole day it's open to everyone I think our wedding started at 3 or 4 so we weren't around too many visitors for too long to be honest so it worked out really good. Honestly the staff and the service from the Botanic Park exceptional 10 out of 10. Lori amazing she was just she was just lovely the entire way and we really appreciate her and Earl he was the groundsman on the day of the wedding and he just made sure everything was good like he made sure the lawn was cut and he was just there to help me um get to the office to change my dress so we really appreciate them great customer service honestly and just all of the staff there are so friendly it was such a great experience. So I would definitely recommend the Botanic Park if you want to get married on Grand Cayman. Kurt and I were to plan our wedding again, I would choose the Botanic Park again. I'd just choose a tent, but I would choose the Botanic Park again. Let's get to food, my favorite part. So we use Chef Remy, that's Rent a Chef Cayman. His IG is the real Rent a Chef Cayman, and his website is www.rentachefcayman. Funny enough, we were actually recommended two catering companies because since we were getting married at the Botanic Park, we need catering services. So we recommended Chef Remy and Meeson Place. And thank God Meeson Place did not even respond to our emails. We emailed them, I think, two or three times and they never replied. So I guess they were booked and busy. But Chef Remy, thank God he responded because when I tell you the absolute best customer service, A1. Food, A1. It's so funny, we're actually um, getting ready to go to Kurt's birthday weekend staycation this weekend and we booked Chef Remy to do the um, barbecue buffet on Sunday and we're also booking him for my birthday in October. Just amazing food. And you know the food is amazing when every single person at the wedding raves about the food. Not one person complained and I'll be honest with you, everyone raved about the food. <sighs> I wish I could go back. I wish you could taste the food. That's how good his food is. So if you're ever on island or you're planning to get married or have an event and you need a caterer, please book Chef Remy. Like, he's one of those people that you can swear by for his food. You can't swear by a lot of people, but I can swear by his food. It is good. 
trust me. He was very flexible on the menu options and he provided a free tasting of his entire menu. We could choose as much options as we wanted and he provided a free tasting to us. Like who does that? No one. So the cost for 72 persons for a plated three course meal and then we also had um, three canopies during the cocktail reception. The cost of that was KYD $5,773. In USD, that's $7,216. I think that was a deal to get three canopies, three different canopies during cocktail reception, right? And then have a three course plated meal for $5,773 for 72 persons. I just think that's a deal. <laughs> I must spend money on food and drinks versus venue that's just me and kurt we're foodies okay so let's get into drinks chef remy also provided an option for drinks where you could purchase your own drinks or he could provide so we opted for the open bar option but we decided to purchase the alcohol and then just use his bartender and bar assistant we had two signature drinks on the night we had a mojito and a rum punch that was primarily during the cocktail reception i think we basically had a full bar i'll put on the screen um a copy of our bar menu we made our own bar menu it was pretty cute. So the cost for that was 750 KYD. In USD, that's $938. We had our wedding cake done by Scratch Gourmet, Chef Brittany Seymour. It's really special to me because Brittany and I were childhood friends. We went to primary school, middle school, and high school together. So it's really special that she was able to do my wedding cake. Like, I really appreciate that. When I tell you, girl is booked and busy. Oh my goodness, we almost didn't get her to do the wedding cake because she was so booked. She had a bunch of um, wedding bookings during COVID that got delayed to when our borders reopened. And we basically got married like right after our borders reopened. So she had to try and fit those people back in. But thank God she was able to do it. So what we actually did was we had a wedding cake. And then for guests, we actually had her do um, cupcake same wedding cake flavor that we had but just in cupcake forms and we were able to put those in boxes with ribbons um, for our guests just so that you know we wouldn't have to cut the cake and then share out and then you know that process takes a while just to make it a lot smoother Brittany is just amazing what she did she carried the cake because we we're having an outside wedding so she carried the cake right before we needed to cut the cake and after we cut the cake she was so kind enough to wait and take the cake back with her and then we picked the cake up the next day just to ensure it could go back in the fridge like who does that man oh so thank god for her and honestly really thank god that she was able to do our cake because our wedding planner recommended us to another baker and so we went for the cake tasting and when i was there you know the cake was okay it wasn't bad it was okay and when we left joanna was like did you taste the aftertaste and I was like, no. She's like, I hated it. And I was like, why didn't you say anything? And she's like, I didn't want to be rude. And I was like, okay. So, you know, obviously you do a cake tasting. They give you some samples to take home. So when I came home and tried the cake again, I started to taste the aftertaste that Joanna was talking about. And I was like, shoot, if I can taste the aftertaste, maybe guests will be able to taste the aftertaste. And I was like, oh, this isn't good. So anyways, thank God Brittany was able to come through and do our cake. So... Funny enough, when we let our wedding planner know, like, hey, we're going to go at Scratch Gourmet because we didn't even hear back from the other baker on the quote. And our wedding planner was all upset, like, oh, her cakes don't last good on display. And I was like, lady, it's COVID time. Who wants our cake on display the entire, like, during the entire wedding ceremony and reception? Like, why would you want your wedding cake on display? I don't want mosquitoes, flies, any of that stuff on the cake. Like, it's COVID time. It's like, we don't need the cake on display the entire time. Anyway, she was upset. She's like, yeah, well, there's a cost for the cake tasting. We're like, okay, let's send the invoice. So long story short, thank God Brittany was able to come through. And when I tell you it's your wedding, make sure you get what you want and what you can afford, not what someone else wants or thinks you should have is very important. She opens her bakery. I'm going to be there at least twice a month, if not more. I'm trying to lose weight, so I'll stick to twice a month. But I will definitely support her to the end. She's actually doing Kirk's birthday cake this weekend as well. I really appreciate you, Brittany. And she's engaged now too, so I can't wait till her big day. Also, the cake and about 65 cupcakes was 550 KYD, which would be USD $688. 
Okay, so let's get into design. We use a wedding planner. She facilitated the design and set up for the event. I would obviously look on Pinterest and send her some ideas I had and then she would also send me some. So that's how we came together to get the design for the wedding day. Cost breakdown for that. Decor was KYD 5600, which is USD 7000. This included stuff like the wedding arch, chairs, etc. The cost of flowers were KYD 1300 USD 1625 as I said because we got married outside in the colored garden we didn't really need that much flowers so we got to save a bit of money on floral arrangements however it's still surprising how fast the cost rose for flowers I mean I guess flowers are expensive but yeah as I said we wanted to get married outside have the ceremony and reception outside in the colored garden so that we could save money on floral arrangements but it still kind of got up there to be honest. So guest count. So on the day of our wedding we had 69 guests. Your guest count can really drive the cost of your wedding. Like that could really blow your budget. Let's be honest. Each person added or taken away from the guest count. It affects costs like your decor, food, drinks. So for each person added we had to ensure that there was like a place setting for them. Obviously cutlery, that kind of stuff. You don't realize when you add someone it's like okay yeah another plate of food but then there's also other costs you need another chair you need another set of knife and fork wine glass champagne glass so it does affect the cost each person you add especially if you add them last minute let's get into entertainment we had different forms of entertainment slash music on the day so we had a dj his cost was 800 kyd which is a thousand usd i really think that was a good deal to be honest because that was for five hours of service and that included setup and he had his own equipment oh our dj was sound revolution pierre from sound revolution big him up when i tell you he did an amazing job if i'm ever having a party again i really want to book them i actually reached out to them for my party in october and i think he said he had another event already but in future i plan to use him he was really good so like kurt we were doing speeches and kurt didn't actually tell him that he was doing a speech i didn't even know kurt was doing a speech right and the dj he had such a good connection and you know just really attentive that he noticed like hey it looked like kurt wanted to say something he was like mr bulgin looks like you have something to say there like he was just so attentive and everyone loved his music we obviously sent through um a list of songs that we'd like to be played on the night and he ensured that he played them and even more so really appreciate him so shout out to sound revolution we had a violinist as well um I wanted to walk down to the violinist playing a thousand years so we had a violinist for the ceremony and for a bit of the cocktail reception so his cost was KYD $600 which is USD $750 he played for two hours before we headed over to the DJ to play for the reception oh and the violinist was Samuel Rose I'll try to find his Instagram and leave his details below amazing absolutely amazing then we had a party booth slash photo booth when I tell you, get you one of these at your wedding, I cannot recommend enough how important and cool it is to have a photo booth at your wedding. I almost want to have a photo booth at every event party that I have. I want to have a photo booth because it's so good for memories. So that was 950 KYD, so that's $1,188 USD. Covered three hours including setup, two staff members, custom background, photo props, and a photo book. So our photo book started from the cocktail reception and ran during the actual um, wedding reception into the night and when I tell you I really appreciated this because after the ceremony we got like whisked away to take photos we thought we were taking um photos with family members and friends first and then we'd have our couple of photos but we got whisked away so by the time we came back, it was time for the reception to start. So basically, we didn't really get to interact with everyone at our wedding or even realize like, oh, this person was actually here, what they wore. We kind of knew they were there, but you know, you didn't get to see them as much or as much as you would like. So just having the photo album of all the photos that our guests took throughout the night is just so memorable to look back and be like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. And the great thing with a photo booth, the lighting you can get some good pics you can get pics with props or pics without i made sure i took pics with props and without because the lighting baby oh my goodness so yeah trust me if you can afford it definitely get a photo boot during your wedding it is just amazing i had a great experience with the staff we would recommend 10 out of 10. 
Okay, so let's get into lighting. So lighting cost us $4,080 KYD, which would be USD 5100. Honestly, this was one of the most unexpected costs. We had the ceremony reception on the colored lawn and you know, obviously as you go into the evening, there were no lights in the area, so we had to obviously bring in lighting. So our wedding planner recommended doing a canopy of lights. I honestly wanted a tent with nice lighting and draping and I was told, you know, the canopy of lights would be way cheaper, especially since we're outside. It'd be like $12.50, ended up being closer to $5,000, you know, so one of the more unexpected costs. And we had cold fireworks. I'm so excited. So this was one of the three items that I really wanted for my wedding day. And this was provided by Versona Events. Clint, I love you. I am grateful for you. I'm so thankful that I found you. So Clint wasn't my wedding planner, but I found him on IG because I was looking at this other guy's um wedding store. This guy that I went to primary school with. Like, oh my god, the cold fireworks. I've been searching. My wedding planner can't find. No one can find. And so I'm very grateful to Clint. So the cost of the coal fireworks were KYD $1,335, USD $1,670, and I had to pay a deposit of KYD $1,000. This was to cover any incidentals, damage, etc. However, if there were no issues, you would receive your full money back within seven days, and I did. The fee also included the setup and the technician on site. So there was a technician on site to be able to um, work the coal fireworks for us. The coal fireworks were honestly such a great addition to the night. I really enjoyed it. And I just have to shout out Clint from Versona Events. He really stepped in and stepped up. Honestly, a lot of people thought he was a wedding planner because he was there the entire night. I had my second dress and the train was running and he knew how to tie it to make it look so graceful. There was this pic that I wanted to get with the coal fireworks going off where Kurt would dip me. And during the night, I completely forgot because as soon as the speeches were done, it was like, yay, everyone on the dance floor. And thank God for Clint because I don't even think I told him that I wanted this shot. And he was so smart. When I tell you he is a good wedding planner, a good event coordinator, he just knew. He ensured that the DJ, like, you know, um, played a little slower song and he kind of cleared the dance floor for me to make sure that the coal fireworks were going off so that I could get the pick that I wanted and I didn't even tell him that. He wasn't even my wedding planner and he ensured that I got a great pick. So I just want to give like a huge shout out to Clint at Persona Events. I may have a birthday party in October and if I do, I'm definitely using Persona Events for that. So I'll leave his Instagram handle just absolutely amazing service 10 out of 10 would recommend honestly okay so let's get into photographer and videographer so we use deep blue images this was provided um slash recommended by the wedding planners so the cost of that was kyd 550 dollars usd 688 dollars and the videographer cost was 1050 kyd which would be 1313 usd really love the wedding photos and the video or because they were booked through our wedding planner i didn't really get a chance to interact or speak with them to let them know what i wanted on the day so i was told beforehand that after the ceremony, we would do the group photos slash family photos first, and then they would take Kurt and I off to do our couple photos. That didn't happen. What happened was, after the ceremony, as soon as we were done, it was like, hey, let's go. And so then we went straight off to do our couple photos, and then in the end, after we retired from doing couple photos, we got um, a few family shots and maybe three group shots. So we were just like exhausted by the time it came time to do the family or group shot. So I wish that we were able to do the group and family shots first and then Kurt and I got to go off and do our couple photos. So just a bit of miscommunication there, but the photos really did turn out great. The video, amazing, 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 amazing. So it was Julie and Cartez Vernon. I'll leave all their Instagram and website handles. If I could do it over, I would definitely have Kurt and I take our couple photos on another day, either before the wedding or after the wedding. I would never, ever, ever, and I definitely wouldn't recommend it to take couple photos on the day. It's too much going on and you're too busy, exhausted. I would prefer to just go and know that I'm taking couple photos on a day just so that we were able to enjoy the moment and really get to interact with a lot more people I hardly got to speak to a lot of people on the day because we were just so busy by the time the ceremony is over and people want to congratulate you, 
you're there taking photos you're off somewhere taking photos and then by the time you come back you're being rushed to take a group photo so people are trying to stop you and tell you hi and hug you and you can't because you're like trying to rush you to get photos so to avoid all of that if you can afford it or if it's something you can do i personally recommend getting your photos taken on another day i could get my hair done again my makeup done again and honestly it probably would look better because i wouldn't be sweating i'd be going in straight away to take photos you get me like i just wish we could do that and kurt wants to take photos by this pink um place with flowers and stuff and then they didn't so he was kind of annoyed so i just wish that we could take wedding photos again i honestly think i'm gonna wash that dress I don't think I'm going to get that dress dry cleaned again and take photos again. You know, just on a different day when you're more relaxed, more composed. Like, I just think your wedding day is hectic enough. But yeah, we got some great photos though, so I'm very thankful. But if I could do it over, definitely would not take a couple photos on the date. Maybe one, two, but not no whole photo shoot. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, so let's get into my wedding dress. So the wedding dress that I loved 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 saw online was usd four thousand two hundred dollars and i was like nope we will not we will not i'm on a budget so i actually found my dress funny enough on amazon i paid kyd two hundred dollars for my dress which is usd 250 dollars for my dress on amazon and i'm gonna link it obviously had to get some alterations done to it but say in total 400 kyd Compared to what I was going to pay for that other dress that I loved, I think we got a deal. <laughs> the reception dress was built by the seamstress. That was KYD 150, which would be USD 188 dollars. I got my veil on Amazon, KYD 50 dollars, USD 62.50. The headpiece that I wore, I bought that from um, my makeup artist customer, and that was KYD 150, I think, or 100 dollars. The groom and groomsman suit. So Kurt actually bought his suit on Island from a seamstress, so it was KYD $700, which is USD $875. We got their shoes on Amazon for three pairs of shoes. I didn't think I paid 200 KYD, but let's say 200 KYD, so 250 USD. I tell you, Amazon came through in the cut. Amazon came through in the cut. So for day prep services, pedicure, makeup, hair. So the guys, the guys and Sami, sorry, um, that's Kurt's sister. They went to the nail salon to get manicures and pedis together. <laughs> So cute. Then I covered makeup and hair for myself and my bridesmaids. So I had two bridesmaids, my sister and my other sister, Sami. So John is my sister, Sami's Kurt's sister. So for our honeymoon, we stayed at the cottages in East End for four nights. It was KYD $1,340, which would be USD $1,675. Let me just put a quick note. So last year, October, I stayed at the Kimpton for my birthday, right? In total, I think I stayed five nights. I'll put on screen the amount, right? I don't think I paid $3,000, $2,500, any of that, right? I'll put on screen the amount I paid. Anyways, the gist of what I'm saying. So we got married in February, which is during high season. That's noted. To book the same room that I stayed at at the Kimpton in October for my birthday last year, to stay during our honeymoon would have been 2500 usd per night per night for four nights 2500 per night i didn't even pay 2500 dollars for our honeymoon at the cottages and we had breakfast included every day and we were right there on the sea like you could walk 10 steps and your foot would touch water so i'm just saying if you're on a budget or if you just want more of a relaxing feel because sometimes I feel like the hotel is just so busy book the cottages Lynn the owner is just so friendly oh I don't remember that lady's name that was there as well hold on do I have her number Lenny is it Lenny? Lenny Glenn her name is Glenn where I got Lenny from but Glenn she was there and she was helping us through um, our breakfast every morning Glenn is amazing we're actually staying there we're actually heading to the cottages today after I film this video for Kurt's birthday staycation what are the odds when I tell you the experience was just amazing the view amazing so if you're ever in Cayman you want to come for a vacation you want to come for a honeymoon or you live on island just want a staycation 
I would recommend checking out the cottages. So provided a candlelit dinner for us for our honeymoon. They set up the room so amazing. I'm going to insert clips when I tell you just appreciate great customer service and just good people. Like when I tell you 10 out of 10 would recommend. So for items included in this video, it's probably about KYD 30,000 and change. Mind you, I got, um, what's it called? party favors we also had mosquito solutions coming after big up mosquito solutions so because we got married outside and on a lawn and you know mosquito season which is all year round we hired mosquito solutions to come and spray the grounds for us i would so recommend them honestly if you're ever having an event outside and you're worried about mosquitoes but Mosquito Solutions, man, they really ensured that we had a good night. There were still a few mosquitoes, but nothing like how it could really be. So shout out Mosquito Solutions. I think we paid $3.50 for them to spray the grounds. And you could really tell that they did work because there were hardly any mosquitoes out there. It wasn't as bad as it could really be. Total items in this video, including Mosquito Solutions, probably around KYD 32,560. That's the mats I did on my paper that might be wrong but around KYD $32,560 and USD that would be $40,700. I also didn't include um, party favor items that we got for gas that costed us a pretty penny. That was when I thought our budget was going to be stuck to but you know hindsight. So wedding planner. Let's get into our wedding planner. So I'm going to go through the cost, our experience, etc. Her cost was 1250 KYD. In USD, that's $1,563. On day, she had an assistant that was $250 KYD, $313 USD. For the floral delivery, $250 KYD, $313 USD. She charges for setup and breakdown of the equipment. So that would be KYD, $1,300, $1,625. Total her cost were KYD, $3,000. $3,050 USD that would be $3,814 so our wedding planner um, we found her on IG and then we saw a few people that we know um, used her so we reached out to them and they gave raving reviews about her so we were like oh yeah definitely let's definitely use her we got a wedding planner because we thought okay we planned birthday parties and stuff but we've never planned like a huge event you know so we thought it'd be good to get a wedding planner because we were um all quite busy my sister and I and so we thought it'd be great to get a wedding planner you know just to handle all the tasks all that kind of stuff so we initially had a meeting the summer before our wedding probably in June or July we had like initial you know welcome meeting kind of thing and you know she just asked us you know when we plan to get married if we had a venue and she wanted to know our budget so you know we explained that to her I explained that our budget was 15,000 KYD she asked if that was supposed to include catering we said yeah and she asked where the venue was and we told her and we told her that the venue was outside of the budget so we were, had already paid for the venue so that wasn't supposed to be included in the budget so 15,000 KYD was the budget so we had that over lunch so I'm gonna be transparent I'm gonna give you the pros and cons um, with our wedding planner are the pros so she has a passion for what she does she's well connected she knows a lot of people a lot of vendors so the DJ violinist photographer videographer were all under her umbrella so what happened was she would book them under her and then we would pay her and that's a good thing and a bad thing it's a good thing because then we don't have to worry about oh we need to find this vendor see if this person's available because she's well connected it's easy for her to find people right the con is we didn't know who she was using until maybe a month or less before the wedding so we kept reaching out to try and get her um invoice as I said, all these people are covered under her, so we wanted to find out, hey, what's the cost of the DJ, what's the cost of the photographer, can you send us the invoice? And she was like, oh, these people are all covered under me, you don't need to worry. And we're like, yeah, we know they're covered under you, but we need to pay it, so can you send us the invoice? So basically, by the time we got the invoice from her, her invoice that had all their costs on it, the setup, all of those items, it was a month before the wedding. And basically, at that point, you can't then change you know you can't then look someone else it's too late to find an alternative so if you're not happy with the photographer or the DJ violinist 
are the cost of the lighting, the canopy of the lights being five thousand dollars instead of twelve fifty, what are you gonna do a month less than a month before the wedding, especially when the budget is over? So as I said, we had a budget of fifteen thousand, and she asked if the catering was included in that, and we told her yes. She also recommended the two caterers, and she was on the emails that we sent to the caterer confirming the cost. So told her fifteen thousand, but let us know if it needs to be more give us enough time let us know because obviously we've never planned a wedding so i don't know if for the 60 people 50 people that i had at first if fifteen thousand dollars is even a realistic budget does it need to be 20 does it need to be 25 i really don't know i haven't planned weddings right so i would expect a wedding planner who has done this for a while to say okay if you want 60 people plated service you know just let you know that's probably going to cost you around you know this give me a kind of idea especially if you've done this before you could say hey i had a wedding with 75 persons i don't need to give names but their wedding came to forty thousand dollars you know just give us an idea as opposed to say yeah okay that budget's fine and then a month for the wedding when you send us an invoice the invoice is almost nineteen thousand dollars and our budget was fifteen thousand and you saw that catering was at least five thousand so then that would leave us with ten thousand but you give us an invoice a month before the wedding of almost nineteen thousand dollars and then it says in your contract that final payment needs to be made three weeks before the wedding date. And we got the invoice a month before the wedding. You get what I'm saying? For the theme, we had a bit of an issue with the theme. So we were already getting married outside. I personally didn't want to have an outside ceremony at reception. But because the colored garden was so pretty and they were like, oh, let's do a canopy of lights. I would have preferred a tent with some nice lighting and draping. That's what I really wanted with a dance floor that had our initials, with the coal fireworks, with a nice arch. That's what I wanted. However, you know, you work with the program, you're trying to stick to a budget. I told you, I first spend money on the food and drinks, then venue and all this other stuff. So since I spent money on the food and drinks, I will make it work with whatever else I need to make it work with. However, we're already getting married outside. I personally don't like the rustic theme. I'll go to an event that's rustic theme, but me personally, everyone knows me, I don't like a rustic theme. I'm not the outsidey girl kind of thing, right? So here's an example of you having to really stand your ground on what you want. I'm gonna insert an example of a chair. This is a chair that she wanted me to use for my ceremony and reception. These are the chairs that I wanted to use for my ceremony and reception even after i told her i wanted these chairs she kept trying to push these chairs me personally i prefer these chairs i feel like this chair is more of a rustic theme that's fine stood my ground no thank you i prefer these thanks so much but i prefer these another thing that i wanted i wanted a welcome sign i wanted the acrylic welcome sign i thought it was glass but it's acrylic right and i want to say welcome to our wedding i'll insert a picture right this is what i wanted this is what I was given. This is literally what I was giving. I was shown this a Friday night and our wedding was Sunday. I say this to say, this is clearly a rustic theme. I hate a rustic theme. I would never choose this sign over this sign. I was told that the sign I wanted would have been over $2,000, rate it It's acrylic. I found after the wedding, you can get the sign for like $150. So I wish I had known that. I just got the sign myself. And then there was like a huge, huge hiccup the Friday night. So the Friday was our um, wedding rehearsal. What a day. It was pouring rain on the Friday. And when she showed me that picture of the wedding sign on the Friday night, I was like, ah, why, did, why is the sign wooden? Like I wanted, why is it not this? Anyways, long story short, it was a huge blowout. She was upset and how I sent her that sign. I told her I wanted that sign. I was like, I would never send you that. I don't like a rustic theme. I don't like wooden. The fact that I'm even getting married outside is a big deal, like, you know? Anyways, long story short, she was like, well, she'll refund me for the sign. And and she, we don't need to use the sign. She'll refund me for the sign and this and that. It, this is a Friday night. And my wedding Sunday. This is Friday day. You get me? So anyways, long story short, I apologize in the end because Kurt and I, we went to marriage counseling before we got married. Um, we went to marriage counseling with Reverend Mary. Love her. She, um, she did our ceremony. 
what's the word she oh my gosh i don't know the proper word she officiated so reverend mary officiated our wedding and before that she provided premarital sessions for us thank the lord so basically during the premarital session she was asking about our wedding day and you know what's most important and you know we're like jesus you know is most important on the day you know to our union coming together with him at the center you know and so anyways basically the friday night you know when me and her were going back and forth and i was like why would i send you that here's the proof and i was getting so upset and so agitated and i just thought of that and i was like you know what this is not what's important right on the wedding day no matter what hiccups we have that's not what's important what's important is the union with god at the center you get me so i apologize as a bigger person i apologize to her and i was like you know i'm really sorry if you feel offended it's fine the sign's okay it's not that big of a deal a wooden sign versus an acrylic sign grand scheme of things it is not the end of the world you get me so i just apologize to her and you know just let her know that i really appreciated all that she's done because i want to be honest she was really busy she had a bunch of weddings back to back from the summer and then she had other jobs outside of wedding planning so she was crazy busy so you know i just took that into consideration i just apologize i apologize for it and i let her know that i really appreciate all that she's done so yeah that was the friday night and then the wedding was the sunday but yeah so you know just saying like different personalities i can admit maybe i'm not an easy person in the long way. i think i'm lovely but maybe i'm not everyone's cup of tea you get me and it's not even that it's just that how can i put it maybe she's doing all that she can and she thinks she's doing an amazing job and maybe i'm here expecting this and she's like hey i'm ready giving you this you know i don't know but i had to be the bigger person i was like hey the wedding day is about god so you know celebrate with family and friends but as i said grand scheme of things wedding sign and all this stuff isn't that important you know it's on end of the day so very thankful for her because she definitely did a great job with the design i would send her ideas that i had on pinterest and then she also showed me stuff so even our wedding cake um design that we had she sent me that picture that she found i was like oh my god i love it it's so simple but a pop of color um yeah i'll show you all the decor from um the day that was all her so really appreciate her for that and then the canopy of lights you know it was more than you know i expected you know cost wise it was very beautiful like absolutely gorgeous like drop dead gorgeous just stunning especially at night it's almost like you had to be there to see it it was stunning so i'll insert a clip of that the canopy of lights even though it was more expensive than i thought I almost wish I just got my tent because I wouldn't have to worry about mosquitoes and all that kind of stuff. I'm very, very, very thankful to her, to her for even recommending a canopy of lights because I had never heard of that before, you know. So very thankful to her for that. Here is the big issue. Because we got married at the Botanic Park and we had to have a caterer, right? We had to rent all the items such as forks, spoons, wine glasses champagne glasses plates all of that stuff we had to rent from massive so she rented them from massive and we paid her so the massive quote slash invoice is in her name but we paid her after the wedding now great wedding beautiful she messaged us to say that massive sent her an invoice for missing items so i'm like huh i'm insert the massive quote for the items that they said were missing it was like 19 forks 20 spoons this much cups i think in total it was probably like 400 kyd i can't remember but i'll put it on screen and so like excuse me so she was like oh no don't you worry about this i'm gonna tell them to recount because this has happened to me before where they send me this invoice saying stuff is missing and in the end it's actually there they just didn't count it properly so i was like okay cool thank you appreciate it maybe a week goes by she messages back saying that they counted and they say the stuff is missing and i'm like lady there is no way 19 forks 25 spoons um eight table runners i'm like 
what kind of people do you think I invited to my wedding? Who the hell? Like, I can't even say it. I was so pissed. I'm like, excuse me? So you're basically trying to say that it's almost like you're trying to say people stole fart spoons. I don't know. I'm just like, the audacity of it is just crazy. It's mind-blowing. So then, mind you, she we paid for setup and breakdown costs, right? As I told you, she left 6, 6, 15. When we were leaving, she wasn't there when any of the stuff was being broken down. She sent someone. Mind you, that person came late. Anyways, also, she didn't count the stuff when they came. So when the stuff got delivered, the plates, the cutlery, the cups, all of that stuff, she never counted how much stuff got delivered. And then the person that she sent to break down, they didn't count how many things they packed up to deliver back to Massive. So there was no count of inventory when it got there and no count of inventory when it left. So the missing items may not have even been delivered. We don't even know if we received, say, 75 spoons and we don't even know how many spoons left. We have no idea of how much inventory came and how much inventory left, but yet you're telling me that I need to pay this bill? On top of the fact that we were already how much over budget? As I said, to be the bigger person <laughs> and just to avoid the quarrel and the back and forth, we paid the massive bill and we told her thank you very much. Pissed. Because I just thought that that was unacceptable. If in your invoice there's a cost for setup and breakdown, you need and you know that you're getting inventory outsourced you need to count to make sure we receive this stuff and you need to count when it's leaving and as i said she left at six and whoever she sent to pop back up didn't arrive until god knows when so how are we responsible you know what i mean i just didn't appreciate that and i was just like on top of the budget being blown and then you come in with this now after we're done and thinking everything's good it was just too much i was just over i was like nah this this is just ridiculous so yeah, so in the end, I am thankful for her. Would I use her again or recommend her? Not necessarily. I would recommend, um, I was going to say I'd recommend her for the on-day service to like, you know, set up and break down. But as we can see, like we had issues with the breakdown because we ended up having to pay a bill that we don't even know if we actually really owed because we didn't even know what got delivered. But personally, I wouldn't. My recommendation slash tip to anyone that has a wedding planner is ensure that you're getting what you want and what you can afford. A wedding planner should not be telling you what to do and what you have to get and what you have to take. Just ensure that it's your vision at the end of the day. They can definitely have suggestions, recommendations, ideas, and if they're great, go with them. But at the end of the day, you want to ensure it's your wedding day. So you want to ensure that you get what you want and what you can afford. The huge tip I have is ensure that any communication you have with your wedding planner or vendors is by one form. So if you're WhatsApping, continue the WhatsApp and confirm. If you're emailing, continue the emails and confirm after each email. Why I say that is... We had a lot of issues because we would email, confirm something by email or send something by email and then the reply would be by WhatsApp. So then by the time you got back to the other email, the confirmation is in WhatsApp. So then people got a bit confused. So we would confirm something, but in WhatsApp you send us something else. You're thinking it's this and it's not. So if possible, just to ensure that everything runs smoothly, just use one form of communication. And I think email is probably best so that you can just see the chain, you can see your attachments, all that kind of stuff. Just email. <laughs> Trust me. So yeah, so all in all, I wish that Joanna and I had just started planning this wedding from before ourselves. And then we could have just reached out to different vendors and gotten the cost and know whether we needed to adjust the actual cost of the budget, etc. So yeah, if I could do it again, I think I would just plan it myself because I think we had to plan so much different aspects already that I just wished it we could have planned it ourselves so would i use her again or recommend her personally no 
but there are loads of people that swear by her and had a great experience so it's really up to the person you know but if i could do it again i wouldn't but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope this video helped you in some way. If you have any questions, comments, just let me know below and I'll be sure to respond.